how I look at marketing and business overall as a marketing coach can seem kind of negative to some people, but I think you actually end up having way more fun if you do a little bit of this seemingly negative thinking at first. I focus on the problems, the issues, the challenges, and all these things that really can seem like, well, that's all the like negative, the most least fun parts of business. But really, you get to have way more fun if you do a little bit of this sort of thinking first. So the first question that I ask, well, not the first, but one of the first questions I ask most coaching clients is, what sort of work do you want to do in a few years? Or once you get to your business to the point where you want it to get to, then what sort of work do you want to be doing? How much do you want to work? What sort of work do you want to do? Do you want to sell products or services? How much interaction do you want with customers? So on and so on. Because that basically translates to what sort of challenges do you want to be dealing with? Because you will always have challenges. If you choose to grow a business where the daily challenges are ones that you're absolutely going to hate, then that might not be the best idea to grow that sort of a business. <laughs> Rather build a business where the challenges are actually interesting or easy for you to deal with or even fun. The other thing, and this is sort of even more important, is that as a coach, I usually try to find out what are the most likely, really severe issues that you're going to run into or very challenging challenges or very difficult to solve problems. Because, and specifically like business breaking level problems. Because the sooner you're aware of those, usually it becomes easier to solve them. Usually it means you can solve them earlier, which means they slow you down less time. And the overall, just so things get much smoother if you're aware of what are the most likely issues and you can plan around that. And this happens a lot, even with like, well, single coaching calls or like I recently had a call with a, a potential partner and he was talking about the type of business that he's now going into a little bit different than what he's done previously. And I could just point out that, well, here's the problem that is most likely to cause you to have severe issues with selling this thing. If you can solve this part, rest is relatively easy. And this is the problem that most people don't solve in that sort of business and therefore have huge struggle. And solving it later on is going to be much, much more laborsome. It's gonna just take way bigger time investment, probably a lot more money than figuring it out already. Like already now that you're building the new types of products or services, figure out how you solve this issue. Similarly, I often tell new clients that, well, now that we're doing this sort of a project or we're working on this sort of a direction, the most likely truly challenging problem we're going to face is this, like this one or two things. These are the most likely things to be truly difficult to do. Often there aren't any obvious, this is gonna be hard. And even the times when I can say that, well, this is a very tricky thing to do, like this is the part where things can get very tricky. 90% um, of the time, it's not an issue because we know that that's gonna be the hard part. We build around it, we plan on it, we test things. I mean, it's not that hard most of the time in the end, but whenever there is a problem that we do actually end up struggling with, it's like 99% of the time, it is that one or two things that I named at the very beginning. These are the likely true problems we're going to face. Now, how do you do that? Well, a lot of it is just having seen a lot of different businesses, but I don't think it's just about having seen different businesses, but having analyzed different businesses, having seen which parts of the marketing system is most likely to be hard to make work efficiently, uh, having seen just where the sticking points are most likely to be, and then analyzing also which ones are the hardest to solve in a consistent way. But overall, my nature is to approach business with this idea of what maximizes your chances of success or what overall actions can you take to maximize your chances of good results. So how do you maximize your odds of success? Well, it's about optimization, but this video isn't going to be op about optimization. I just can't really talk about this without mentioning this. So you have to have this mentality of analyzing what's holding you back and what is the most likely way to fix that specific issue. A lot of people unfortunately go about it as, let's just try random things until hopefully something works. Somehow, eventually everything aligns at the same time, even though I'm just randomly trying different things. It's very unlikely to work. So you should have this mentality of, figure out what is working now, what is not working, how do you fix that? What is the underlying issue and so on. If you're interested in that, I have a free video where I go through my method for figuring out the most likely reason for a single piece of marketing not working. If you're interested, uh, there's a link to that in the description. 
So what I want to talk about today is this idea of get past the most likely sticking points, the biggest risks as early as possible. Uh, this is something that a lot of people who are in business, even for a long time, don't really, I'm not sure, maybe they understand, but they don't embrace this way of thinking. And there's a few different aspects to this. There's uh, also a couple of common sort of related ideas that seem like they're solving the same thing, but they really are not. Not that they're bad ideas, they're just not solutions to this. The basic idea is that if you solve the biggest issues very early, then it's usually easier to do. So let's say that the likely reason why your business isn't going to go well or some new product doesn't sell well is a specific objection. If you can predict that there's specific objection that really is going to be the sticking point, then the earlier you're aware of that, the more you can build everything around getting past that objection. If you build everything ready and then think of like, okay, so now I need to add something that negates that objection, then it's usually going to be way more work and end up being much less effective. So for example, you might then think that, well, I'll add a little bit of stuff on the sales page, or I'll add a small thing to the product that adds on top of it. Whereas if you would have thought of it early on, you might have built the product a little differently to completely negate the objection, make it completely irrelevant. No one would have even thought of it. Or if you would have built the entire promotion so that you were aware of this objection is the hard one. How do I make it so that it definitely gets negated or dealt with? Then it's much easier. Whereas if you are only thinking of it at near the end when you've built a lot of these things, then you either do it much less effectively or you waste a lot of time redoing things that you already did. Sort of a related thing to this, uh, or another way to approach this, is this concept of failing fast. And it's a good idea. It's basically what I'm now talking about, but I think the idea of just fail fast is kind of an oversimplification. You need a logical way to approach it, a logical way to actually build your plans so that you pl fail fast in a way that actually makes sense. And I'm simplifying a little, but basically it is about how do you figure out as early as possible if you can solve the problems while wasting as few resources as possible. So let's take a, a simple example. Let's say that there are three major risks that you're aware of, three things that you think are reasonable to think that they might not work. They're not just a one in a million chance that it won't work, but there's a, there's a meaningful risk to that, that this thing won't be able, like you won't know how to solve this then how do you do it? You have three of those. Well, first of all, think of how likely each one is to actually be a problem and organize them based on that or score them somehow based on that. And the other side is to think of how many resources would it take to figure out if you can solve it, how much time and money, how much focus would it take to do that or find the solution to it or find out that you can't solve it. And then organize them based on how do you with as few resources as possible, lower the risk as quickly as possible. So let's take an example. Let's say that you're starting to build a new sales funnel or marketing strategy or conversion path, as I call it. And one of the issues that you could run into is that something unexpected happens, that there was something that you just didn't think of early on that you could have solved. Or maybe you're just missing an opportunity that could have been pointed out early on. Maybe it is that you don't think of an objection or there's some apparent contradiction in what you're doing or there's something that you're doing that will confuse people or something else. Of course, the more expertise you have in marketing, the less likely it is that you miss something really big. But it's going to happen. Even if you're really good at it, you're still going to miss something when you do your own marketing. I mean, recently, uh, a friend of mine who's a very well-known marketer, uh, he's doing a, a big launch soon, asked for my feedback to his plan for his product launch. And I gave him, I think, 16 pages of notes. Uh, and that's because even though you're very good at it, he's someone who's, who other marketers pay handsomely to do their product launch planning. It's still really easy to miss something in your own thing, just because you're so in your own thing that seeing it objectively is just incredibly hard. And there weren't any massive mistakes, but some things where I think that, well, this could be a genuine issue if you don't address it early. If you're not at least aware of this being a potential issue, so you're not compensating for it, then that could be a problem. 
Anyway, um, other things could be just very specific issues like, do you know how to reach potential customers? Do you have a way to get in front of them? Do you have a way to get their attention? Do you have a way to do the next step and the next step? Can you close the sales? Do you have ways to around all the specific objections and so on? Like you could list out all sorts of things that you you know already as the likeliest problems. So once you know all those potential issues, then think of, well, how, how likely is each one to actually become a major issue? And then how much money and time would it take to get rid of each one? Or how can you even get rid of each one? So as an example of that, and this comes up a lot because I do marketing coaching as my main business. People often say that, well, they want to first try on their own this, let's say they're redoing their website or they're, um, they want to build a new marketing funnel or a sales funnel on their own first and only afterwards, once they're done, then get my feedback. Their idea is that, okay, let me do the best I can and then you can come and improve it from there. And that's basically okay. But if the direction you're going is not the best, then even if I can improve the outcome at the end a little, if I would have told you that, well, you're much more likely to get good results if you go this other direction, <laughs> then your odds of actually good results are much better that way. Of course, ideally get my help for the whole project. But if there is just one point where I can help, I usually always say that the best time is as early as possible, because then I can save the most time and money for you. Uh, it usually means just much better trajectory for your business or for that specific project. But you can't get rid of all risks completely early on. Some of them will just, you just have to do things and then be like, well, that might th become an issue. But you have to take that into account when you plan how to do, let's say, a sales funnel. You should build it so that it's, first of all, easy to get the feedback to why something isn't working or what specific aspect of it isn't working. And also build it so that it's easy to change just single parts of it. There's a very popular uh, system for building a sales funnel that relies on several videos. There's, I think nowadays, even included a webinar and, and sales pages and just tons and tons of things. And the problem often is that if you figure out what the problem, there's a, a situ, like specific issue there, you have to change basically everything. You need to redo two or three or four different videos and a webinar and a sales page and 20 or 30 emails. And it becomes so massive of a project just to fix one issue that very few people ever do that. They just end up rebuilding an entirely new system, hoping it works better. So it becomes very difficult to improve anything if you don't build in the way to get the feedback you need and a way to like, build it in a way that you can tweak it with reasonable effort. Another related thing here is this common approach in growth hacking or software circles especially this idea of like, let's start from the beginning and then just only when we get the first thing working, then we start working on the next thing and then the next thing. So it could mean that we do a few different ads and we see which one can we get people to click. And then we start thinking of what the landing page should be like and we build a landing page and wonder, well, how can we get those people who click the link to take the next step? And then once we get that to work, then the next step and so on. And that can work. There are cases where it can actually work really well, but they're, I think, very limited. And there's an issue with the approach in most cases, which is that you might get some feedback that looks positive, but since you can't actually validate if it is as positive as it looks like, you might be going in the wrong direction. So for example, if you get people to click an ad, are you certain they're the right people? If you're not in a situation where you're just figuring out, well, what do some people click? And then I'm going to build something that those people might want. If you already have a product or service or even a general industry, do, are you actually confident that you're getting the right people to click? Or are they people who could buy what you sell? If you don't have any sort of system for validating that they are truly the right kinds of people, then you might be shooting yourself in the foot. In some cases, it's much less of a concern, but sometimes it's a very big concern. So how I usually approach those is to build at least a little bit of a conversion mechanism behind the ads, for example, so that there's we can get some indication that, okay, we're getting some people to click who will also buy or at least get much further in the funnel so that we're not just hoping that the right people are clicking. And then there's also this sort of the opposite of the fail fast idea, which is that some things you generally want to do before other things. So as an example, 
if you don't have an idea of who your target customers are, or better yet, if you don't know who are your most likely to buy customers, if you don't know how to narrow down your target customers so that you're really aiming for the people who are most likely to buy, then everything else is going to be pretty damn difficult. So, and there's a lot of those things that make way more sense to do as early as possible and make everything else, every step after them, just much easier and much more likely to work. So if you go with just this fail fast methodology, it's easy to also start prioritizing things wrong or uh, doing things in the wrong order that makes it much harder to overall get good results. So even if you know that, okay, well, this is the big issue or the most likely problem, I'm gonna solve that first, screw everything else until I've solved this. It doesn't always work that way. There are steps you might need to take before that. So maximizing your odds of success means a lot of different things. You should predict what are the most likely issues so you can tackle them early on, then have a way to actually go through them in a logical order that gives you the best chance of overall positive results. You should build your marketing in a way that makes it easy to then improve when some issues do come up. It's not usually if, it is when. There will always be things that you can improve significantly. So build your marketing in a way that makes it easy to find those and then work on them. And then also just overall remember the general order of which or order in which you should do all these different things. Some things you just really should do as early as possible. If you're interested in my overall process for how I approach marketing and how I help clients, uh, I have a masterclass. It's about an hour long with just the, the whole process I go through. After that one hour, I briefly tell how you can apply for coaching if you're interested, but you see the full process in that hour first. Uh, there's a link to that in the description. I'm not yet sure what my next video is going to be about, uh, but if you want to see it, remember to subscribe. And if you have any ideas, if you have specific questions you'd like me to answer, leave a comment. I'll check those and I'll try to make videos answering any questions that come up there. And if you like this video, please click the like button. It helps me out. You can think of it as a small thank you. So if you do that, thank you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.